what's so good about Martha's Vineyard that I don't have in my life? Tell me what I would have if I were invited, let's say, and I wouldn't go because I, w- I wouldn't go to any club that would have me. I, I believe Groucho Marx was right. I would be extremely uncomfortable in that setting. What do I have there that I don't have here? What do I need there? I'm not looking to make money through con- social contacts. I'm not selling anything. I'm not buying anything. So in that sense, I'm just an ordinary American. I got nothing to gain or lose by meeting people like that. I don't need any favors. Well, actually, I yeah, okay. I could lobby for them to take my name off the list in England. That probably cost me my last account. Let's see, from a New York lawyer who was a big, oh, big First Amendment lawyer. Oh, hey, oh yeah, big First Amendment gives speeches, does movies. He wanted four hundred grand in a suitcase uh, to, to smear somebody off in England to get me off the list. You hear? Like I didn't know the First Amendment lawyers were not just fronts for the porno mafia. <laughs> and you actually thought that principle. Oh, they give speeches at NYU. And now, ladies and gentlemen, one of the heroes of the First Amendment, uh, Arthur Schmuck. Uh, Dr. Schmuck, would you please come out here? We give you an honorary degree. Uh, oh, what a great man. He's represented every foul mouth. Dirtbag First Amendment pornographer in history. Hey, now I got to tell you that freedom of speech is the most important thing. It's fundamental to the Liberty Bell gong ring. Hey, oh these frauds! I'll take a criminal any day over these lousy liars. I can't stand any one of these liberal lawyers. Every one of them is a fraud. They're either representing a drug dealer or a criminal or some other enterprise of that nature. I met them in my life. I know who they are. They all hide behind. These noble traditions, noble traditions. Watch out for the man who uh, uh, espouses noble traditions through, uh, through in every statement. I know a guy, every time I talk to him, he tells me he's honest. I don't even ask him if he's honest. I don't want to hear whether he's honest or, or a liar. Just a business relationship. Every conversation, he tells me how honest he is. <laughs> Reminds me of the First Amendment lawyers that I met. <laughs> so as I say, that's why I don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard. Uh, don't you love these menus at these dinners that that, that the newspapers always print? They dined on uh, uh, poached salmon, like you can't get it in Safeway, and Chardonnay wine from Washington State. Well, that was nine dollars right there. Fresh cut green beans au jus. I'm oh wow, a green bean, a salmon, and a bottle of wine. And what they have for dessert? Ice cream. Wow. I once met a guy who. Uh, he was like a role model for all the kids in the neighborhood because he was, I told you, he was a club owner way back when no one knew what a club was. But he was a, a tough guy. Of all the fathers, he was like a fighter, a nightclub owner. And everyone, all the kids always gravitate toward the tough father. It's the way it is in a neighborhood. We all idolized him. The nicest guy in the world, gentle, spoke quietly, a pair of hands on him like like meat, like, like, uh, meat, like sides of beef, the hands. But he never lifted a hand to anybody, and never hurt his children, never hit his wife. In other words, a gentleman, but a real man. So he would sit and lecture us as we got older, because remember, you grow up in a neighborhood, you grow up together. So as we got older, we're 14 now, we'd sit and ask him things, and he would tell us things such as this. He said, what are you worried about money for? He would say, no, don't be worried about money too much, he said, because you can only wear one suit at a time. And now that was a common statement amongst guys in that generation. I didn't even really understand what he meant. But it went in deeply. Now, today, I don't even wear a suit, not even one suit at a time. But I understand what he means. You can only wear one suit at a time. I, I prefer I prefer a T-shirt. But what he was saying was something different, meaning don't be obsessed with money. You can only wear one suit at a time. He was trying to tell us there were values different than money. Now, there's nothing wrong with it if you make a lot of money. God bless you. It would have been great to have a lot of money when I was younger, but I didn't. I was too idealistic and too focused on saving the world to just run after a buck. As it is, it worked out fine. But what I'm saying is, these were the kind of men that were around then. I wonder if there's still men in the neighborhoods who sit down with their guys, with their own son and their son's friends, and talk about such things anymore. I'll be, well, okay, I'm not going to be right back. That's like, uh, I'm going to take a breather, then take a call before before I'm right back. Okay, give me a piece of music, uh, Ray. A little. with me. Me. I love it. See you love us tonight. Some traveling music. Love Jackie, please. God, I hope it's a habit. What if prison? It's all a racket. What am I going to do? All the things I've denied myself. I love you. <laughs> you ever think about that? I know God doesn't want to hear this because He knows everything. Do you remember? What if there's no heaven? Well, you wouldn't know it anyway, so it doesn't matter. What if 
Life is just a, the, the film is over. So in other words, you don't look back and say, damn, I should have done that in 1993. That I could have done, but I didn't because I was afraid of going to you know where. So it doesn't matter. You don't lose either way. <laughs> I'll be back. Imagine discovering an opportunity that can completely rebuild your retirement fund by 40% over the next two years. Does it sound too good to be true? It's not if you take action today. Call my good friends, and I mean good friends, at Swiss America. Gold IRAs have averaged 20% per year growth since 2001. It's just common sense to roll over dead paper assets into gold, the best performing asset of the century. Then you can relax no matter what happens on Wall Street. Call now for a complete Gold 101 DVD and my free CD. Call toll-free 888-867-8965. That's 888-867-8965. For nearly a decade, I've told you to trust gold coins and Swiss America. Today, it's more urgent than ever. Get my CD, DVD, and new special report. Call toll-free 888-867-8965. That's 888-867-8965. Learn before you earn. Don't just imagine rebuilding your wealth. Do it now. Call 888-867-8965 today. On the air, online, and on the go, this is Talk 910 KNEW. Incarnation. The Savage Nation, any topic is uh, open today. And this is a sad article. I mean, it's alarming that vets are waiting, wounded veterans are waiting for disability payments while the, some of the vermin inside the administration are robbing uh, bonuses up to $24 million and bonuses were given out. And the vets are sitting waiting for money. This is an example of government at its worst. This is an example of what happens when you create a bureaucracy. This is an example in a minuscule way of what will happen with Obamacare. You create a new department, you're going to have more corruption. So here you have severely wounded veterans waiting for their disability payments. They're not getting them. And inside, corrupt officials are getting bonuses uh, to the tune of $24 million in bonuses paid out. Separately, a technology office employee became involved in an inappropriate relationship with a high-level uh, official in the Veterans Administration. That girl flew 22 times from where she lived in Florida to D.C. where the VA official lived. That travel cost $37,000. You hear this? And they have names. Of course, they're innocent until proven guilty. Catherine Adair Martinez, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Information Protection and Risk Management in the Office of Information and Technology. They say she misused her position, abused her authority, engaged in prohibited personnel practices when she influenced the VA contractor and later VA subordinates to employ a friend. And then she had an inappropriate relationship with Mr. Howard. Who's Mr. Howard? We have to look up to see who Mr. Howard is, another genius government official. Now retired somewhere, probably in Beaufort, North Carolina. I don't know where he lives. How did they get away with this? How in the world do they get away? You, you, you hold four library books for 30 days too long and the, the, the black helicopters arrive on your lawn. You take your dog in the wrong, uh, wrong walk. Oh, God. So you want to create another government bureaucracy, sure. Single payer, blah, 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 government care, blah, blah, blah. You'll see corruption like you never saw in your life. You'll wind up in a medical clinic with a doctor from uh, a country you can't even pronounce who doesn't speak English. With, a, with blood on the smock and a broken, uh, a broken eardrum and no drugs in the pharmacy. But you'll get medical care the way they do in Cuba. Oh, yeah, you'll get medical care. Everyone has medical care in Cuba, the way they did in the ex-Soviet Union. No medicines in the shelves, stupid doctors, and, and, and unsanitary conditions. That's what's waiting for you. And I don't work for an insurance company. And I've paid for my own medical care my whole life, even when I was poor. I always did. Even when I couldn't afford it, I signed up for a plan that I didn't really like, but it gave me some coverage. You know, thank God I've been very lucky. New York, Cesare, W-O-R, go ahead, you're on. Uh, thank you for taking my call, Michael. Um, the other day you were talking about Van Gogh and how uh, powerful his work is to you. Um, it's the same for me. Uh, I was at a show at the Met. Uh, his, and saw All right, so you were moved by Van Gogh and... And uh, also the way you, you structure your show. There are 
two things that are really important in Van Gogh's work, and I think they're really important in your show, and it's conviction and discipline. You know, you, you have conviction to know what you say, what you believe in. Well, he and I don't share one thing in common. I don't drink absinthe. You're not asking me to send you an ear, are you? It's <laughs> <laughs> not up for sale. I'm not selling it on eBay. <laughs> no, I, I think there's a truth in, in his work and a truth in what you do. I mean, yeah, I hope I don't wind up in the same bug house that he wound up in. <laughs> he went there on his own. <laughs> he wasn't sent there. Yeah, he, could, he couldn't take it anymore. Yeah, you know, well, one of the most touching books is the correspondence between him and his brother who loved him. Wow, what a beautiful... That those letters between his brother who loved him and Van Gogh, astounding. You ever read those letters? Yeah, my father gave me, gave them to me. Look there how you grew up with with actual art in your life compared to today. You still go to the museums, Chesser? Luckily, my father and I are both artists. And, oh, uh, you're.